Just to close the loop on the quick start page, if you check that box at the lower left hand corner that said don't show me this page anymore, you would wind up at the new session page, which I'm going to open by going to the file menu and command N, control N on a PC. So you get most of the page, except you don't get the open session and open recent part. But if you need to open a session or open a recent, those are available in the file menu. There's open session and open recent is grayed out because I don't have any recent sessions. So now we're at the basic windows of Pro Tools. Here is the edit window, this big window. All of these little pieces are attached to it, by the way. If I move this around, you can see that. And behind it is the mix window. Now that will contain a bunch of tracks at some point, which you'll see. But right now, it's a big blank window. Perhaps yours opened up in a format sort of like, let me see if I can imitate what the very opening of Pro Tools usually looks like. Something along this order, where you see mostly edit and a little bit of mix on the side. So. If that's what you have, that's fine. Go ahead and maximize this window. You can do that by using the little green dot here. And we'll let this fill up. Now, for now, this is the transport window. And for now, we don't need the transport, really. We'll just go ahead and close it. So use the little red dot to close it. And we have a whole big window of edit. Now it's time to import our audio. So it's in the file menu, under import, you can shift command I, shift control I on a PC, and we come to the import audio page. So I know that the file that I want to work with is called clock, C-L-O-C-K. So I'll use the search function here, and I see a lot of little clock things in here. I believe that the one I want is just called grandfather clock. Now yours should be in your exercise files for chapter two. And you should see this file, grandfather clock. It's a .caf file. So Pro Tools will convert this to be used because it is not an audio file that Pro Tools can use directly. It tells you that right there in the import audio page. It also tells us it's a QuickTime file because it's a core audio file. So QuickTime and its bit depth is 16, its sample rate is 44.1, and it's a stereo file. It has two channels. It's about a minute long. So Pro Tools will need to convert this, as it tells us over here. And I will go ahead and play this using this little green triangle. And if the volume is a little heavy for you, on the playback, you have volume control here. But this is a way for you to scrub through the audio. You can make sure that it's the right file that you're looking for, that it has the right components. This page, this little audition segment here of this page, allows you to audition things before you import them and find out later that they really weren't the file that you wanted at all. So it's kind of a little audition stage down here at the bottom of the import. So I like my 16441 stereo file. I'm going to work with it. I'm going to convert. And then Pro Tools in this corner of this page tells me what it's going to do. Well, I made a session that's at 48K. So it's going to need to apply sample rate conversion from the source of 441 to my destination of 48. And I have different types of quality that I can choose for this sample rate conversion. There are five levels here. I never choose anything but the tweak head. I figure I'm not that much in a hurry that I need to convert these files quickly. The slowest, as you'll see in a second, is not very slow. And I'm more interested in quality, really, in my projects than I am in raw speed. So I always choose Tweakhead. So I will do that this time too. And I will say done. And the next step is that Pro Tools ask me where I want to store this audio file. Now we'll talk about file structure in another movie. But for now, let's just say that you will almost always want to save the audio files for your current session in the audio files folder of your current session. 
And that's where Pro Tools will look when it goes to open them. So how do we know that this audio files folder is in our current session? Well, I'm going to hit the command key and look at the path for this. So there's the desktop session. There's the session that's actually called clock edit. And in the audio files folder for this session is where this will go. So I'll say open. Pro Tools processes the audio. And I now have two options for where to put this audio in my session. I can create a new track for it or put it in the clip list, which is just kind of a holding bin over here. We call it a browser sometimes in some programs. It's a place where files hang out until we're actually ready to work with them in the timeline. So it used to be that you had to create sessions and tracks and everything. Pro Tools does a lot of this for you now. So we'll say, put it on a new track, put it at the session start, and say OK. And now it's created a stereo track to hold my stereo file. Left side on the top, right side on the bottom, and it's in my session. Now sometime later we may want the imported sound to appear at a specific location in the song, like a chorus or a bridge, or on a particular frame of video. And that's what selection and spot modes are for. But for now, I'm in slip mode. My file should have appeared here at the beginning of the session, which it did. And I think we're okay. So we found our audio, we examined it, we auditioned it, we converted it, we chose a place to save it, and now it's in the session. Now, once you learn your way around Pro Tools, that process will be as simple as navigating to it, hitting convert, done, open, and okay. You won't be examining where the audio files folder is and that sort of thing that we did here. So let's see if we have playback. The space bar is how you play in Pro Tools. So I see the timeline moving. And I hear my file. So space bar will stop, space bar will start. It'll start again at the beginning. because that's how I have Pro Tools set up. We'll take a look at that in another movie. And I think we're set now to begin our editing process, and we'll do that in the next movie.